this video will demonstrate a setup for sending and receiving Morse code audio tones on Mumble using the ICW server. What's a little bit different about this setup is there's a new release of a breakaway pipeline that's compatible with Windows 10. You can read about it here. And what having a virtual audio cable uh, for this setup allows us is to set it as the default Windows audio playback device as you see here so we have the breakaway pipeline one as the default device now we can have software CW keyers and CW keyboards here's YP log here's CW type and here's FL digi and all of them are using that breakaway pipeline one and the reason we're able to hear it in low latency with uh, hardly any delay at all if you may not even notice any delay it's that low is because Reaper is using exclusive mode to join that pipeline with the Realtek audio HD sound card which is just the basic sound card of this computer so the connection between that pipeline and the sound card is done by Reaper using exclusive mode in the lowest possible latency settings and you have to kind of adjust those by experiment and see how low you can get it before you start getting a bunch of audio crackles pops and clicks and then you have to start raising stuff up right now it's down pretty low it's about 44 100 and 64 buffer frames and that's low enough for me to be able to play these uh, software CW keyboards with the paddles and a straight key and I hear my side tone with no delay so down here for the iambic software CW keyer using da 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 or using the DSR and the CTS pins and again I don't notice any latency it feels like it normally does so it's doing a really good job and it's using the W DM-KS driver so you have to look at the bottom here and that's where breakaway pipeline shows up because there's another one on top that uses a slower driver so it's too too long of a latency that one doesn't work but this one right here and using WDM and I have it at 10 milliseconds you can actually lower that if you wanted to but this is this is plenty uh, this is low enough where I don't notice any problems Same thing for the straight key, breakaway pipeline right here at the bottom, and that WDMKS. This gives you the lowest latency possible. You need to bring da 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 up after the CW keyboards because the CW keyboards are not using WDM, they're using shared mode or MME or DS drivers to get their audio to Reaper through that virtual cable. Breakaway pipeline one. And then when you've got the key keyboard that you want, whether it's YP log, CW type, or FL Digi, or some other one, then bring up da da da. And when you select that, you won't be able to bring up any further programs because this will kind of lock it in with this WDM driver. So breakaway pipeline one, WDS, straight key. And it's nice that da 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 lets you bring up multiple instances. And I'm using a program that'll be in the show notes to let to let the, this computer share one COM port, COM port three, between multiple instances of da da da. So we have straight key, iambics, CW keyboard all going to the mumble input which we'll take a look at now that's my voice here's a straight key here's paddles CW keyboard So everything is working just fine. So it's a really good setup. 
Now on Bumble, we're using the same setup as before, using ASIO Bridge with Reaper's reroute ASIO driver. I won't go into that now, just I'll consult, let you consult with that video, which describes it. But that's the same setup. That's how we're getting Morse code audio tones to the input and receiving from Bumble output using the hi fi cable that comes with VB Audio's ASIO Bridge. So we're combining several technologies here to make things work. So we only need two tracks in Reaper for the mobile input. Again, we're using just that virtual audio cable, the Breakaway Pipeline 1. And for this, we're using Reroute ASIO, which is coming out of that ASIO bridge. And they both go to the sound card. Now on the top track, again, just to review, we, in addition to going to the sound card because the master selected, we're also adding a new hardware output to use that reroute ASIO driver channel 1 and 2 so that everything we're sending in in the first channel goes to the mobile input. Mobile input comes separately through reroute ASIO 3 and 4 and goes to the sound card so I can hear it. Now the advantages of this is you can use simple VST plugins like this to keep the volume steady And that is very useful, especially if, if you uh, have your audio down at a certain level and you don't want it to go above that. That Loudmax does a great job. It acts as a limiter and an AGC circuit all in one. Once in a while, you'll get a full volume spike because of an Opus codec situation, especially using Morse code audio tones. Once in a while, those full volume spikes are pretty loud, and that limits that pretty easy. So that's a, a, just another unique advantage of using a virtual audio cable like the Breakaway Pipeline on your Windows desktop as the default audio and uh, audio device player so that you can use software CW keyboards, software CW keyers. You get everything into the mobile and everything out of mobile without causing any interference. This control panel comes with the breakaway pipeline and it's very similar to uh, the virtual audio cable that you, that you may be familiar with. And this is just the stock settings. I didn't change anything on here. I just uh, brought it up to show and also to kind of keep track. And if anything went awry, you would see it again, continuous overflows or underflows or underflows over or under there. And then you can reset things. You can add as many cables as you want. And there's a lot of tutorials on the net already about using this control panel. We're also using another uh, breakaway product, the Breakaway RTA. This is listening to the uh, stereo mix. And it's just a little bit of a scope and a VU meter there. And it's just to keep track of the waveform and maybe how, how much is peaking. And, and as you can see, when you're doing CW, shows a bit of the waveform there. So between Breakaway, Reaper, and Da Da Da, ASIO Bridge, a bunch of this software comes together to make a, a pretty, pretty uh, unique setup for using Morse code audio tones on Mumble on the ICW server. Thanks for watching. Uh, before I go, let me uh, show you the Reaper settings here. And now we'll go over the settings for Mumble. Again, just the Hi-Fi cable, both for the input and the output. The only thing you have to remember is on the ASIO bridge is to bring on the left here that channel 1 and 2 to the 3 and 4 channels here. So you just move it over one slot. And this takes the output from Mumble and routes it to reroute ASIO driver channel 3 and 4, which is where this is listening. Thanks for watching.